Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. He sought the ultimate in human agony with instruments of torture ghastly beyond belief. This is episode 155, recorded December 13th, 2021. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Doc Rodden, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will tackle another classic or not-so-classic film from this wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. And tonight we're doing Bear and Blood from 1972. We're excited, uh, but let me introduce the crew. I'm sorry, did I bust your no, drums out? No, I'm good. Uh, starting off with the one and only uh, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how you doing? Blood. Moving on. I like, I, like, <laughs> I like movies with blood in the title. Blood. 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 Uh, yes. I'm and uh, if it's not blood, it's Bava. And let's hmm? segue that right into uh, Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and all around nice guy, Baron Bill Mulligan. How you doing, sir? I love me some Baba. And you know, whenever I have a parchment that allows me to resurrect the evil uh, ghost of an ancestor who killed millions of people, I go right to it. Because who wouldn't? What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> Throw it in the fire. Throw it in the yeah. fire. Something. Lots of fire. All right. Oh. Also joining us tonight is Chad Hunt, comic artist, co host of every decades of horror that we do. How are you doing, Chad? I'm good, man. I am good. I'm kind of never saw this movie before, so I'm kind of um, looking forward to it. I, it's more Baba, so it can't be more, can't be all that bad. More Baba. Nope. No, it, even well, we'll get there. We'll get there. This, uh, of course, this was Bill's pick, and Bill is of course going to pick <gasps> Baba Mario. Baba. This was, all right. Was it not was Bill's? There? This was Chad's no. pick. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I was I willing to let Bill take the credit, though. I, don't I stand know. corrected. I no, thought this yeah, was he, your pick, Bill. He beat me to it. He beat me to it. It was just he a matter did. of time, but yeah. He did. Well, he he just gave you a birthday I gift. I scour the Christmas. streaming services. <laughs> when, you do three, when you do three podcasts, you got to be on your toes and make sure you're... Yeah. He, put those slots, fill sure those slots in the schedule. He makes his picks far enough ahead that they drop off all the streaming. Yeah, right now. <laughs> right yeah. Right. That's all right. All right. We're looking at Bear and Blood, directed by Mario Bava, written by Vincent Fort, 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 oh, Fortre. My God. Fortre. Original story and screenplay, uh, Willie Bald, Esther, and of course, Mario Bava. That's Cassidy. the most awesome name ever, isn't it? Willie Bald. That's what w I want. Willie Bald. <laughs> yeah. Willie Bald. Willie Bald. Uh, Cast includes uh, Joseph Cotton, Elkie Summer, Antonio Cantafora, uh, Massimo Girotti, uh, Rada Rasamov, Luciano Pegosi, and Dietra Tresler. Yes. I, Sounds good. We'll, I got, we'll go with I, that. Yeah. I think I got, I think I got, a, I yeah. think I got a 67 and a half on that. All right. Release date yeah. is May 27, 1972 in Italy. And October 27, 1972, in the good old U.S. of A. Just in time office, for Halloween. Yeah, it was a good choice. Box office is 270 million lira. Uh, and was that or or and 464? No, or. Um, that, that's, okay. that's what that's worth it, that okay. in 1972. Gotcha. Uh, also known as Torture Chamber of Baron Blood, the Baron Vampire. And the oh. horrors of Nuremberg Castle. Synopsis, of course, is a young man visiting the castle of a murderous ancestor in Austria accidentally brings his dead relative back to life, searching for new victims. Okay, it was totally not accidentally. He did it on right, purpose. Right. He, <laughs> accidentally yeah, on purpose. There on, and kept I trying. I there on purpose because I thought, what a, what a yeah. terrible... I mean, Ash brought the evil dead accidentally. Hey, he didn't okay, know what he, he was reading, it. but... He did it twice. He did it twice. Yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. He, kept, he kept doing it. Oh, it didn't work he that kept time. Doing Let's it. try it again. Not enough people died the first time we did this. Let's try it again. Mm -hmm. Hey, oh, we, got him. we got him out. We sent him back. Let's do it again. Um, all right. So we, st we start off by going and saying, when did we first see this film and what was our first impression? And uh, Chad, sir, we'll start off with you. When did you first see this? I know you already uh, dropped that 
um, earlier. And what what was your first impression? Um, I liked it. I, um, I wasn't expecting much uh, from the description and the plot and everything, but um, I really liked it. Um, Baron Blood looked incredibly, uh, I, I thought he looked amazing. It was almost like a, a Phantom of the Opera meets Dark Man Mm-hmm. type of type of house, house of wax kind of yeah yeah, yeah. i thought yes, he looked very house he, looked, wax. he looked awesome um pretty pretty gory stuff in there the the iron maiden that he used to um to kill the house mm-hmm. servant was oh that was that was so good the the zombies looked good when they came back to life i was really really impressed by but they still had the pink blood though but uh yeah. But other than that, it was uh yeah. I like I like the story. I loved Elkie Summer. Oh my gosh, yeah. she, yes. loved her, loved her, and uh hated Peter. I hated Peter. I didn't like that guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. I mean he had he had mm-hmm. zero usually if you do some kind of incantation, you bring back the ghost, the murdering ghost of a, a baron who's known for torturing people. You have some, maybe some form of, uh, hey, I'm sorry about this, guys. Nah. Yeah. No, no. Nah. He, he, he had no remorse. With, yes. The handsome guy with hair. Right? Yeah. Uh, he, he just kind of stood eyes. around. It was all about the blue eyes. Yeah. All right. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I really, really like this movie. I liked it. Excellent. Jeff Moore, sir. When did you first see Bear and Blood, and what was your first impression? Uh, Friday. Nah. First time I saw it. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know that much about Bob. I think I had seen a couple of them as all well beforehand before we started doing this podcast. So, uh oh, I should sit like this. <laughs> My digital picture frame turned on. Uh, <laughs> by itself. Got, got some grandbabies oh, back there. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I, I enjoyed it too. It, it's a little clunky, but there's tons of good baba cinematography and and uh the castle is incredible um yes look great location oh the uh and the kills especially the iron maiden yeah and the and the uh i think it's the mare that, that goes from the bell rope mm-hmm. i think it was a bell rope or it was a rope anyway i don't know it was a rope but yeah so anyway i i enjoyed it it's baba it's not his best, but it's pretty good. Not his best, but pretty good. All right. Now, Bill Mulligan is the Bava master of all of us. Uh, no. When did you first see Baron Blood? Long, long time ago. I mean, when I when I got into my <laughs> Bava kick, um, when, I, when I really got into Bava, I had to find everything I could of his. And this was a pretty easy one to find. This one would be shown on TV now and again, a bit edited, but largely there and I, I i'm pretty sure it was available on tape so i saw it and i think i thought then is now it's not anywhere near my favorite baba it's um the zoom lens i am a little tired of you know it, it oh, felt to me yeah oh. and he used it a lot now i i was under the impression that's because you know as time went on and budgets got cut they couldn't do the the camera movements which are hard to set up and time is money but Looking at it now, I, I really think, no, I think he liked the Zoom. I think he enjoyed using it as a way of telling the story. Um, and it's it's not as annoying and cheap looking as, say, in a Jess Franco movie, but it's never been one of my favorite things in horror. It just calls attention to itself too much. So there's that. But as a Bava film, it's got a lot of Bava touches. It, it, you can tell you're watching a Baba film just by the, the setup, the composition, the use of color, although it's not as nearly over the top as some of my, my favorite Baba films in terms of color and mood and all. But it's there. It just does feel a little bit like he's redoing some old you know, things he's done before. There are parts of it that just remind me of earlier films. The Iron Maiden, obviously a callback to you know Black Sabbath or, or Black Sunday. And um, you mentioned uh, when he's chasing her, uh, Elkie, through the woods. I I remember seeing a shot when I first saw this. I thought, oh, that that's the shot I saw in Famous Monsters. But actually, that was from Mystery of the Wax Museum. So uh, 
you know, it just it has a little bit. The, the blood coming under the door is is clearly Val Luton's the, the Leopard Man. Mm, I think, very nice. and mm. and that's okay because this was not a film that Bava was really, you know, had a whole lot of investment in. He didn't write the screenplay, and and you know, this was more of a work for hire thing. He hadn't worked for a while, and they, you know, th th and that's what got him to leave Italy and go and make this film because he really didn't like leaving Italy. But there just weren't a whole lot of offers coming him his way, so he went and did this. And while I don't think it's it's the best Baba film, it made it made a lot of money. It did really well. I mean that that thing that we saw there was just the Italian release where it did okay, but not gangbusters. But apparently it was a big hit around the world to the point where they gave him carte blanche to make whatever kind of movie he wanted, and he took that and made Lisa and the Devil, which simultaneously is one of his masterpieces and also one of his biggest disappointments because in his lifetime he never saw it released. In its original form, it got, I think, butchered into um, House of Exorcism. But uh, obviously, this movie did really well that they gave him that opportunity to make what is admittedly, at least in the Devil's, not a very commercial film. So, you know, Baron Blood in and of itself has a lot of cool bits to it. It's it's leisurely. There's not a lot of story there, but it's got some really cool things. Elkie Summer is a, just cute as a button, mm -hmm. and uh, Joseph Cotton, who I like. And I like him in horror movies, you know, toward the end of his life when he was taking any role he could, Lady Frankenstein and all. I really feel like he he, he wasn't there for this. Oh, he phoned uh, it in. He phoned it in up, up until the point yeah. where he, the big reveal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the big reveal on who he is, which everyone knew. I mean, is there anyone who didn't get that? Um, then he's sort of having fun chewing up the scenery a bit. But before that, He's legitimately terrible, laughing at everything. You know, this guy is so clearly, you know, I, he, I don't know if he was phoning it in or if he was just like, now, remember, you're secretly the bad guy and they don't know it. So he's like, you know, everything he does, he says with a chuckle. Like he's laughing at the fact that no one's picked up on the fact that he's barren blood. Spoiler alert. Mm -hmm. And it, it gets a little annoying. But and except for Elkie and the witch, who I really liked, I, I would like to have seen more of her. Actually, I wish she. Bob, Baba does good witches. He does that. That sequence is the most Baba esque mm -hmm. uh, thing in the movie, and it's really good. But you know, so it's not it's not his best, but it's definitely better than most. And this is 1972, where gothic type things were being phased out. Mm -hmm. I'll say this: I think Baba did a better job of updating. You know, bringing the the uh, Victorian Gothic monsters into the modern age than Hammer did. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, this is a lot less dated than Dracula AD seventy two, which was dated by AD seventy three. Hey, hey listen, now. I love I love AD seventy two, but oh my god, it feels like a like a time capsule. <laughs> it is a time capsule, which is why it's so great. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll jump in here. I okay. I thought I had seen this, and mm. I have not. <laughs> so seeing it this week was the first time I saw it, um, or I saw it and totally forgot about it, one or the other. Because I do remember, mm. you know, the title and everything, um, but I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. But yeah, the some of the shots totally remind me of. House of Wax when he's you know running with the hat and everything mm -hmm. and it's just a shout yeah. out to me that was totally out. but there's also the breathing door from Haunting is in here too oh so. yeah mm -hmm. and um, I I had a great time with this I it's it's very straightforward it's it, it doesn't really have a whole lot of things to distract you from the main thing it's mm -hmm. like hey I I I'm the descendant of this really crazy madman and I want to bring him to life. Oh, I did. Now he's killing people. What are we going to do? We're going to try to kill him. Very simple. I feel somewhat Very responsible. Yes. yes. <laughs> and, uh, somewhat and, being the key word. And Elkie Summer has the magic uh, MacGuffin. So that's all you yeah. need. Mm -hmm. All you need. Yeah. And, and then also, uh, Bill, what was with the 70s, Mario Bava and Strange Kids? Well, wasn't that the same little girl from um, um, Bay of Blood? It's not beyond the door, is it? Oh, Bay of Blood. 
Maybe. Probably, probably. I think she, I think she was, and um, she looked, she looked I don't familiar. know. I don't know who dubbed her voice, but that was creepy. <laughs> she was a strange little kid, and and you know you bring up the MacGuffin. Like, where wh did they ever explain where is like they're futzing around? It's like, oh, what are we gonna do? And she just like comes out, and she sounds like she sounds like Paul Atreides' sister from Dune, and she's like, "What about the amulet? Oh, yeah. Maybe it's the amulet." Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you, exposition lass. And it's oh. the it's like the the most <laughs> ordinary amulet ever. It's just like oh my god, yeah. They, so, they ran down to the yeah, local market yeah. and said, "I'll take that one." Yeah, well, yeah. They, there's nothing fancy about this amulet. You're you're right. Uh, the girl was in Bay of Blood. She was also in Deep Red and Demons. My well, she was an usher. She was an usherette. And, oh wow. Yeah, but she she certainly had that creepy kid stare yeah that he would bring to almost all the 70 movies we've covered yeah it's crazy it's some kind of thing with him I mean, he's afraid of kids i guess i don't know wait, wait, was she the, that kid. wait a minute was she the creepy girl in in deep red that like put the needle through the lizard yes oh god that kid mm. yikes she got work she got work yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, but you know, in come some on. Good movies. Check out this poster, mm -hmm. and it was rated PG. But that's when PG, PG. didn't mean right. You know, it was apparently didn't mean Jack Squat back then. <laughs> no, it, didn't. It, it really didn't. <laughs> not like not like I mean, you know, they do today. But. It wasn't. Well, it wasn't hard in a cage. Enough. Yeah, there's an eyeball sort of hanging there, and people Wish screaming. I mean, no, really I don't think so. it, it felt like it should be rated R. Maybe not, but it felt like Did, it should. I, you know, I, I was watching. There's not that much blood, and and the scene, the scene that made me just about jump out of my chair when he closed the Iron Maiden on that. That was a great effect. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I had to go back and watch it in slow mo to see if I if they were doing it the way I think they were doing. I think that was a really well made um, fake head. Mm -hmm. And but but you oh, know they yeah, didn't yeah. dwell on it. They didn't you know go over the top and show blood spurting out. But it was almost subliminal. But you felt like I think I just saw a spike go into that yeah, face. Yeah. Yep, yep. So good job, good job. And and I mean that that shows intelligence. You can you can show too much, and then it shows you you know the magician reveals how they did it, or you can just show enough to sort of like whoa that was startling. Yeah, good editing. Yeah, I liked it yeah. when they opened it back up, and it was just like this. It was the gooeyest blood. Yeah, yeah. It was kind of, kind of like it didn't drip. It what was hanging on those spikes? I mean, it was more than blood. It was like, does that come out of a human body? I don't know. Uh, uh, might have been rust. I don't know. <laughs> uh, and this one is a little bit more. I don't. There's no Baron in this. It's the witch. <laughs> and okay, I don't know. Right. Right. Yeah. But that's the torture chamber. It's torture chambers, even. Oh, oh the torture chamber. chambers of Baron Blood. And it's got Baron I Blood. wish, I do wish that the Baron had more, you know, more imaginative fives like kills or something. I mean, he's supposed mm -hmm. to be an expert in evil and yeah, torture, yeah. but for the most part, he just cuts people's throats and strangles them and, and all. Uh, you know, I, I would like well, to have seen he, a little bit more of this. Well, he's hooking well, the yeah, one guy he, up on the rack. Yeah, yeah, one guy in the rack, and he's gonna he, eye poke the other guy with the hot poke. He was gonna, but did he? He didn't. I mean, no. you know, okay, he did. The, he did the Iron Maiden. I just feel like this this guy should have been like fives, mm. you know, really going over the top because this guy's a legend. He's you know he's got a reputation to uphold. He's is like it, Vlad this, the Impaler with a hat. Date vibes. This predates fives, or they both came out toward the same time. No, fives was seventy one. Ooh. So it doesn't. Well, it may it may not have come. Yeah, he may not have seen fives. Mm -hmm. So I guess Joseph Cotton was just like doing horror movies at this point. <laughs> yeah. And didn't they say they actually wanted they they originally wanted Vincent Price to play the Joseph Cotton role? Which oh, can you imagine? Oh, that, oh, would that awesome. was yeah. Because yeah, even if even if Vincent Price phoned it in, a phoned in Vincent Price is better than most people <laughs> acting their hearts out. Yeah. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. And who was the second one? They, there was another fairly famous actor they wanted. Ray um, Milland. Oh, okay, that would have been interesting. I could, yeah, because yeah, what did he? What did he, he went he, on to do? The incredible two the frog. <laughs> the thing with two heads. Yeah. The yeah, thing with yeah. two heads. He had to, you know, he was already committed to that one. <laughs> yeah, he's like, no, that's got to be the hit. 
I, I um, wonder if Vincent Price turned it down because he yeah, he did a movie with Baba and it was Baba's worst movie. Oh, the so, bomb, the girl bomb. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Goldfoot and the bikini bombs, or I don't know, it's just it's depressing. It's the only comedy that makes me cry. No. <laughs> no. Uh, well, we talk about Bava. What what makes Bava so, uh, Bill? I I think you need to uh, the these pictures. I mean, he every every shot, and and not not so much this one as as some of the others, but even so, every frame is thought out, and I I really appreciate that. That there's so many ways to shoot something, and you know, you've only got so much time in the day. But he came in under budget and and early on this, which you know, nice. I'm sure another reason they loved him. But, you know, it's cool. I don't care that the backlighting makes no sense. It never does. Who cares? It's it, that's a great shot on top. A hand, the I mean that that practically screams giallo in the middle, yeah. and um, the spiral staircase. So again, there's there's elements in this film that remind me a lot of Kill Baby Kill, which is one of his real masterpieces, mm -hmm. and uh, the spiral nice. staircase, the little girl with the ball, and everything. So yeah, there there is some repetition in here. Like maybe he's going through the motions. I don't care. I wish Baba had lived to be a hundred and twenty. He could have kept making the same damn movies every year for the for the for eternity, as far as I'm concerned. They're just so much fun. And, yeah, I thought. And, oh, sorry. Didn't mean to no, no, no. Just like like this this bottom shot. I mean, that's again. We got some cool backlighting. We have the 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 flora and fauna behind her. The the spiral thing there. It's just a cool shot, and and great composition. He, he, great composition. Yeah, yeah, he he was a painter. He was a painter and wanted to make sure every frame said something. Is there a narrative coherence in the story? Not particularly. That was not his thing. This That's one not more what, so than others. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a story here. It's not very compelling. Yeah, I thought the shots of uh, Elke and. Um, Captain Blue Eyes when they were up in the burnt, the burnt <laughs> part Blue of the castle, they um, they were like you know holding each other when the, you know the thing was when Baron Blood was walking around outside yeah. or the ghost of Baron Blood did this thing and it, it you know because they were off center and then it was had great shadows and and multiple lighting and really straight up Baba it, it was great yeah but you know boy was there any chemistry between those two no did was, any I loved it when he like put his arm around her and Elke goes, <laughs> get that thing off me. <laughs> yeah, playing hard to get. Yeah, she was. Then they kiss and you think, well, this is going somewhere, but it goes nowhere. Hmm. Yeah. Which is fine by me. I mean, didn't care. Then Baron Blood turns out to be a creep. Why don't you come by oh, later? <laughs> oh, yeah. I love that. How many times did he's like, hmm, you have not yet come to me. Oh, oh the others can come as well and watch. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, I'll be expecting you. Yeah. Man. I feel women like just, we're supposed women, to... women just take a lot of crap and set up this movie. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's harmless. Movie. He's in a wheelchair. I feel like that the scene where he gets out of his wheelchair should have been like a big, even though we all knew who he was at this point. Yeah, and if we didn't know, um, once again, the little girl who apparently read the script when no one else did uh, told us that he was yeah. the ghost. Yeah, and everything. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, clearly, she yeah. skipped ahead to the end. Even you know, didn't just read her lines. Like, oh, he's the ghost, and by the way, the medallion's the thing you got to use. So they, they should have just they should have made her leader. She was like Nuke from Aliens. What happened? I mean, where did that did did I miss it, or was it just not there? Anything about the amulet until the girl says something? Is it is it literally just a last minute MacGuffin? I mean, I they can't hit remember it. The, yeah, the, the witch, witch mentioned yeah, the it, witch it. had it. She was holding it. And she said she made some cryptic thing like there's another thing you can do, but she didn't yes, spell it yes. out because that would make life easy for everybody. You know, she's like Glinda the Good Witch. You know, oh, I couldn't tell you about the ruby slippers. You had to find that on your own. I would have bopped her right in the <laughs> snout <laughs> if I were Dorothy. Her, popped her bubble. Uh, Almost please, got please killed send, by flying monkeys. <laughs> please send all curses to Bill Mulligan. Yes. Care of DOH. That's right. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, but you got okay, okay. I loved it when she held that little two cent amulet up to <laughs> Joseph Cotton and was saying, "Go home, go away." <laughs> it uh, didn't work. And he's like, like, she, she was trying her best. <laughs> you I wish she had just faith. like, "Oh no, no, not the cheap trinket amulet. Give me that." 
just she smacked probably, it right out of her hands, backhanded like, her across the hall. Around, that was awesome. You have to have the original for that to work on me. I mean, yeah. The original incantation was like three words long, right? Yeah, and, well. And then, please come, we invite you. And then the, to get rid of him was like the same thing. But they acted yeah. like it was like. Oh, it burned up, so we can't remember those three words anymore. Remember. Yeah. Right, right. Klaatu, Barada, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That never works. That never works no. when you do that. Bad things yep. happen. Yep, yep. Get it right or don't do I, it at all. I will say, though, skipping to the end, that when they finally do have the amulet do something, I liked it. Mm. I, I mean, it was it was kind yeah. of cheesy well, until... Now, this... was, she, was she squeezing it so tight there was blood and the blood was part of it when it fell onte Fritz? Maybe. There, maybe. she had that little cut on that. her face too. I mean, okay, I maybe. thought maybe there was some. Yeah. They had a little blood on it. Yeah, blood. That maybe yeah, that blood fell yeah. on. Yeah. yeah. Then well, it kisses, a little like, bit of Alpha Seltzer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was reacting to it, and. Oh, well, that's what you get for dicking around when you got the red hot iron knife um, and you're like threatening to do something. You should do it because you never know when an amulet's going to fall on a body and cause you to hurt it for some reason. Was this the first movie where the dead come back to life to get revenge against the bad guy? Because that's a trope we've seen in Maniac and a number of films. You yeah, know, like we're all. Well, I, I'm tales trying to remember of, where uh, else. Tales from the Crypt. If tales yeah. from the Crypt with Peter, Peter Cushing. Yeah. But just like where you've got a maniac who's killed a bunch of people, and then just when it looks like he's going to, you know, perform his ultimate evil, suddenly the dead come back and, okay. and take him out. Tourist trap and shit like that. But that was after. Yeah. yeah. So well, it seemed like there was a lot of that before. It, it, before. It, it seemed like it came out of EC Comics. Yeah. It felt, it felt EC Comics. It, it, that is that is very EC Comics. Yeah, but it was great. I oh, especially the guy, you know, the Fritz or whatever his name was. It, was stuck in the thing comes up and then the other was that doing his handyman yeah, yeah doing his best yeah. peter laurie yeah. person he, he did he did look a little like peter laurie oh when he, when he was like doing the uh I, I <laughs> yeah. thing yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i ain't got nobody <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it, it, which we have to do that movie too we do have to do that movie. and then he just he tripped over the we've well, done it <laughs> did, did we do it already and he yeah. trips over the the suit of armor. It was stupid. Yeah. But um, it well, was great. It, so I lost my thought. Ah! It's over there. It's <laughs> over there on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Check behind the refrigerator. That's where my <laughs> lost things usually Other side. Are. Other I side. Must have dropped it. <laughs> how about a shout out? How about a shout out to the doctor? Blood. Baron Blood shows up at his door. And he's like, oh my God. You, here, come yes. in. Come in. Yes. Martha, yes. band aids yes. and back team. I mean, good God. That, it, what kind of village does he live in where that shows up at your doorstep and you don't immediately right. realize this is this is something from beyond the grave? It's like, nope, nope, someone fell into some farm equipment. Yep. It's certainly not a very grateful uh monster. Baron. I yeah. know. Yeah. No. He, he, well who is it who's that the Baron is carrying? And I'm thinking that uh, most of the dubbing was unobtrusive, I thought. Yeah. You know, it, it, it fit in. Obviously, some of them were English, maybe dubbing themselves. I don't know. Uh, some of them weren't. But when the when the Baron was hauling the body up the stairs, that was just like. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he was making all these yeah. exertion noises yeah. that were just terrible. Well, obviously, that was not Joseph Cotton under the makeup. No, um, was it? no, 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 no. Yeah, nice. And and apparently, actually, just, uh, that person is is credited. Uh, yeah, Franco Tocci, Tocci, T O C C I. Baron Otto von Kleist, corpse, uh, corpse. Apparently, this is another one of those movies where, as they were making the movie, suddenly money got tight. Yes, for which we can thank Richard Nixon because he did mm -hmm. some of his wacky economic stunts, and it caused a big problem in Europe where they were selling dollars or getting out and it, it caused issues and Joseph Cotton didn't get paid and he refused to do any more until they paid him the full amount and so yeah there were issues but they got it resolved I think they they traded um, you know some distribution rights or something and got the finishing bit so um, yeah it's it's interesting how that we, we keep hearing that crop up 
there's a several movies that we, where you know eh, you had to stop and start up whoops, again. Whoops, yeah, mm -hmm. especially right in the seventies, right? This is well, what? Thing, tell me if you know anything about the writing because the information in here, this is like everything. It's like yeah, backwards. So on the the writing credits say Willibald Esser and Mario Bava are created the story on the screenplay. Then it says Vincent Fautre, original story, English version, hmm. and screenplay in English version. Oh, interesting. Uh, the guy, uh, the uh, Leone, the producer, said, no, that's not true. Fautre wrote the whole thing and brought it to him. And that Bava did very little, and that other name was just a made-up name. Yeah, that had something to do with keeping the German uh, co-producers happy. Right, right. <laughs> it's like it's like your your Canadian executive producer is just there. You may just make up a name and okay. Uh, but this yeah. guy has fourteen credits. So how does he? <laughs> how does a made up name? They, I guess they did that fourteen times. <laughs> what's the name of that? What's the name of that? When the person wants to get taken off of a Alan a Smithy. Film? Alan Smithy. Yeah, it's kind of uh, like Alan Smithy. Uh, right. He made right, a lot right, of movies, right. Alan Smithy. Yeah. Uh, you chose Most of them not good. Some, yeah. <laughs> all of yeah. them not good. What are you talking about? That's the reason why it's Alan Smithy. Um, <laughs> all right. Elkie Summer. Uh, oh, look at her. Right. Oh, yeah. My favorite match game contestant. That's right. She was in that, wasn't she? Yeah, she was on there a lot. She was famous for being famous more than, you know, it wasn't until I really got into horror movies I ever actually saw an Elkie Summer movie. But. Oh, was no. she was she in a Pink Panther movie or something? I think yeah, like. shot in the dark. Yeah. Shot in the dark. Okay. Yep. She's just got that classic Euro pixie, you know, little exotic, but little girl next door. That's not true. I've seen the girls next door. They don't. I'm thinking. Like didn't she do a? Uh, did she do a Playboy layout? Uh, back in the '60s or '70s. Did she? Because I, I knew about her before I saw her in any movies. I know that. Uh, yeah, she she definitely was a famous because she's famous, but she she was great in this. Like, I thought she, she was she's too. Like, she's like pulling her yeah. face when she gets scared. Yeah. Oh, she, uh, she had she showed some great like like Doc said when she got scared. You really she really did a good yeah. job there. Even in her conversations with other guys, were like when she was talking to some of the other guys, she would like. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, back to what I was yeah. saying. To, but she was. She was. I thought yeah. she was really good in this. I thought she did a great job. And and the camera loves her, and especially yeah. when the camera is being welded by someone like Baba. Although she's not my. She's not the kind of um, heroine I think of when I think of a Baba film. I mean, Barbara Steele, who only was in one of his films, though, that just seems more Baba esque. You know, the darkness. Mm. She's such a. She's so bright, and and you know. Gets she to wear stands, a lot of cool uh, outfits. Yeah, she stands out. She's yeah. Everybody else had like darker clothing on, and she's in the Santa Claus outfit almost. <laughs> you know. So maybe, hair. and maybe that's why he used her in Lisa and the Devil, and that you know she does stand out. She does. She you know with with all the decay and yeah. dark earth tones mm -hmm. and everything. Then you've got this little Tinkerbell pixie here. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, she was a lot of fun. She was definitely my favorite. Actor in the movie, I take that. Back. I saw, <laughs> I saw her in those. Uh, she was in one of those Dean Martin, uh, Matt Hill oh. movies. Oh uh, man, let's see which one was that. I love the uh, the wrecking. It's crew. the one where he drank and smoked wrecking throughout crew. the whole movie. Oh, that one. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> is, that, is that before or after? That's what they could should have called the whole series. <laughs> yeah. 68. I don't. I don't know why I love those Matt Helm films, but they're 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 terrible. Yeah. They're so uh, wonderful. They're so they're well, so. Bad, a bunch he of looks those, like he's uh, having fun. Oh yeah. James Bond spoofs back then. James yeah. Goldberg. James isn't Goldberg it, did a couple. Oh, uh, in like oh, Flint. Yeah. 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 Is, isn't uh, isn't he the one that slid off the round bed into the bubbly hot tub thing pool? Oh, uh, probably. I don't or, know. Is that, or, or was <laughs> well, that James Goldberg? One of the two. Because I watched. I love the in like Flint movies too. Um, yeah, which well, what I remember made about Austin her, Powers I, I, much better. <laughs> I know when we did uh, what, what's the name of the other one, Lisa and the Devil? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, when we did that one, I think I said this, but I when I was still in high school, 
uh, my grandma's always had like life and look and those magazines. And I'd sit there and read those. And there was one that was a whole article about Elkie summer and how her house was haunted. Awesome. Was very, very con- I mean, I was convinced, you know, yeah. it was in like, print. It had to be like true. Gene Rayburn. You know? It was print. It had to be true. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I met some, if if I'd met someone like Elkie Summer and her opening line was "My house is haunted," it's like, well, pull up a seat and tell me about it. It's, it's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. I believe can a I, word. Can I come Who over cares? To your place and check it out. Yeah. Hey, let me. Uh, yeah. But yeah, she's she's cool. <laughs> she's neat. All right. Well, we should talk about Joseph Cotton. Joseph yeah. Cotton. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Phoned it in for sure, but now he's I, having fun at the end. At the end, he he is you know kind of gleeful and yeah and all that. But the yeah, evil, when he's the in the evil party, was having a good time. You could tell when he right. was. Yeah, he gave it what he could. I when he reve- like when he could. revealed himself able to walk, yeah, he sort of he sort of they it sort of became fun for me to watch him. Then after that, from that point on. I wonder if yeah. he did that before the money ran out. And then after the money ran out, he gave, he gave it's the other just performance. Doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Or maybe. Um, but yeah, what? Uh, hush, hush, sweet Charlotte. Oh. Yeah, true. I mean, he, all the stuff he did with Orson Welles, but, you know, mm-hmm. the third man. I mean, just he, he was a great actor. And, and like a lot of great actors, you know, you get older, the roles aren't coming in. You take what you can get. Um, I, I think I think it was mentioned that in his autobiography, he had nothing to say about this film at all. I guess so. I guess he didn't have very fond memories mm-hmm. of it. The way he did, you know, fives and stuff, he he had some fun with that. He was so, but oh, he yeah, did he, yeah. yeah, he did like Baba. I, I don't know anyone who had a bad thing to say about Baba. Um, you know, even those who were like Vincent Price, I don't think Vincent Price disliked Bobby, just like disliked the film they made together as well. They should. Well, well he, the Soylent, he, Soylent Green, too. Which... Oh, wow. And yeah. uh, Elkie Summer, Elkie Summer did specifically say that he was uh, a gentleman, like a father figure on the set. He was not creepy or inappropriate or anything else. And you could get away with a lot of that back then. So the fact that he didn't, I mean, he just seems like he was a genuinely nice family guy with some quirks, but, um, you know, just really had that, just an interesting dark side to, to him well, that he expressed in, in film. He played, uh, uncle Charlie in shadow of a doubt. <laughs> who, who, who's that? That's Joseph Cotton. Yeah. Joseph Cotton. Yeah. Um, the evil uncle who was, uh, mm. I don't know, what do you call him now? But he was, uh, you know, grabbing up widows, getting their money and killing them. Oh, yeah. Shadow and he, he yeah. tries to hide out with the, with the family. Hitchcock film. Mm-hmm. Um, he was in uh, The Third Man, which is one of the great, yeah. great film. Uh, so he did a lot of uh, key movies back in the 40s. Uh, some Niagara Mm-hmm. With uh, Shirley Temple, or Shirley, he was a good actor. He has a, he has a real <laughs> Monroe, distinctive look. Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. Mm, Marilyn Monroe. Holy crap! Yeah, he he was, was in. Uh, <laughs> he was in uh, uh, Santos's favorite favorite kaiju film, Latitude Zero. Oh, Latitude oh, Zero! Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> Forgot yeah. about that movie. <laughs> That's it's old Caesar Romero, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Oh man! But like in the seventies, he did uh, just a string of things: you know, Honorable Doctor Fives, Lady Frankenstein, Screaming Woman, TV, Doomsday. Oh, I like Boys, the Screaming Baron, Woman. Yeah, Baron Blood, Devil's Daughter, another TV movie, Soylent Green, like you said, mm-hmm. uh, Syndicate Sadist. Oh my gosh, what was that? Yeah, yeah Airport seventy seven. I remember that. And then, um, and he was in Concord too. What the hell is he doing about them? And, Was he in yeah. Murder She Wrote? He feels like someone who should have been in Murder She Wrote. Oh, I'm sure he was. Uh, Fantasy Island. No, he wasn't Love Boat though. Oh, well. oh everybody he, was on Love Boat. I was on oh, Love Boat yeah. at one point. He was in Heaven's Gate. Anybody remember that movie? Oh, wow. Oh, the Survivor. <laughs> that was his last film. Yeah. 1981. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> the hearse, I, I, hearse is a, oh gaslight. I don't know. Did somebody mention that? That's a, no. oh gaslight's a great one. Oh boy, yeah. that's gaslight's I, become uh, entered the vernacular. Yeah, <laughs> Island of the Fishmen. Oh jeez, um, wow. <laughs> I wonder how much he got paid for these. I'm just, I'd be curious to know what what you got. You you know, you got a name actor that you can put on the poster, and you know. On top of all these other very Italian names that no one's ever heard of, mm -hmm. um, and I think all of his scenes could have been shot in a week, easily. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Although I don't think the film took much more than a week to film entirely. But I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But um, of course, you got the Baron. Very but, few. I was able to find very few good shots of him. Well, he's of, in the shadow the almost all the time. There's yeah. only that one right. flash. Flash of light, yeah. So and a lot, cool a lot like of it. the, a lot of behind the scenes stuff is in black and white, which is like, why are you? It's a color Baba film. Why are you giving me black and white shots? Because they were doing it for newspaper and print ads. I guess that's true. That's true. It didn't have to be in color. I mean, um, he makes that. He rocks that pilgrim's hat pretty well, which yeah. usually looks pretty dopey. But that's why, to me, it feels very much like the House of Wax. Yeah, yeah there, there's a Vincent Price movie for me. Yeah. But I guess the murders in the, what was it said, the uh, museum? What was it? Which one was that? You were well, saying? Mystery of the Wax Museum. Mystery of the Wax Museum, yeah. yes. So now, so um, explain. So he, he comes back, he's resurrected, he's still pretty messed up. The doctor can only do so, so much with Bactine. Um, so how does he turn into Joseph Cotton? And he never said. I I made up one of those huge jumps that somehow or another the killing these people was restoring him to. There you go. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, that works. And then he was able to buy his house back through the miracle of compound interest. And let that be a lesson to you, ladies and gentlemen. If you start saving now, <laughs> you know, if you start saving now and put it away, squirrel it away somewhere oh, where no one can yeah. get their hands on it. If you get resurrected after 100, 200, 300 years, you it's are yours. sitting pretty. Yeah, mm -hmm. the first Bank of Austria. That's exactly what oh, I yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, the, who was it? Was it Telly Savalas or who was it we read about that did a lot of these films because they got, they got to stay in Italy for free? You know, it was, yeah. yeah. Uh, that sounds like uh, and then he, but he did other big name ones at the same time like twilight's last gleaming i think he had yeah. uh, burt lancaster and he played the secretary of state so oh listen they said we're gonna fly you out to austria you're gonna get to stay in this really awesome castle and uh make a movie and we'll pay you x amount of money and your food will be taken care of and everything else I'm like, well yeah okay kick in another ticket for the missus and you got a deal mm -hmm. probably how it happened yeah uh, there's your witchy poo there's the witch. Yeah. I mean, that's such a cool. She was so, middle yeah. shot, she was so cool. Mm -hmm. and there's that, that middle tree shot amulet. Was, yeah. I'll bet anything that middle shot was composed in camera because it just looks like the kind of thing Baba would do with a reflective uh, piece of glass or a halfway mirror or something. And, you know, just very cool. The lighting it. And everything. It looks very cool. Yeah. 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 She was neat. And then she was when she had she was the one that was at the top of the castle at the end of the movie, right? Or was that supposed to be that was supposed to what? be blood, but again you could hear her well, I think they want they brought him out to show that he was had been destroyed because he disappeared, mm -hmm. even though they were killing him inside. Yeah, it, that never made any <laughs> yeah. sense to me. It I never made a lick of like, sense to me. It's like something was shot and they said, Well, let's use this footage to or you know. And and the version that I remember seeing on TV, which I think was the American version, uh, well, obviously it was, it just it did a freeze frame. As I recall, it did a freeze frame of him standing on the wall, so he didn't disappear. And I was like, What? So this one made a little more sense where he fades away and in, into the smoke and everything. Uh so here's something. I believe the version that I saw here uh, on on um, prime or wherever or Tubi, i think it was is the original version because it's got the uh, music by the guy who did it not les baxter yeah. right, right right yeah and so i saw I, I, I was i was trying right. to find the les baxter version because i remember the music being a whole lot less annoying than it was this time i did not like the music that much it, it sounded like a cool jazz the kind of thing you have if you have a 
you know, silk pajamas and a copy of Playboy <laughs> after dark or something. Well, there might be a reason for that with Elky Summer. So. Mm. I'll have to, I, I need to go back and check though. Uh, but anyway, I think you're right, Bill, based on the times, because the, like the AIP version was supposed to have like seven or eight minutes cut. And the time frames on, I watched it on Canopy, which is like my new joy. Um, you can watch for free. All you need is a library card at a participating library. Uh, and it's amazing hmm. what they got on there. Anyway, uh, it was the same thing. It was like uh, hour 38 minutes, something like that, or hour. And uh, But I don't know what they cut because I didn't think there was that. The gruesome scenes, I didn't see where there was eight minutes of it, you know, mm -hmm. unless no. it was just AIP's penchant for having 90 minute movies. You know, that's... Likely. I think they could have cut some of the uh, going from place to place stuff. There's there's some stuff that could have been well, taken out without any the, loss. The two minute, the two minute seven forty seven ride could have been cut. At the yeah, <laughs> yeah. And there was a lot of that stuff at the through the air. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so this was the first movie to be shot on a seven forty seven, and the producer thought that was the greatest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you got, but you got to explain to people there was a time when flying was like so special that you just can't believe uh, you flew on an airplane and they gave you real food. It wasn't a joke. It was like actually right. pretty good right. food. And, and <laughs> they would give you little wings and the captain would come out and shake your hand. He looked like an astronaut. I mean, like you really felt like this was, you had arrived and now flying is just like and going on smoke. a bus. <laughs> You oh, yeah, smoke, yeah. You smoke like a people, chimney. You could, yeah. Oh, yeah. People wore suits instead of, uh, yeah, dammy pants. You carried yourself with a certain sense of decorum. You were flying, damn it. But now, now flying is just a bus with the same so people you see on the bus. Just get you there I thought, faster. I, I thought I recognized your name. This Rada Rasimov was in, uh, uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, but also Cat of Nine Tails. Oh yeah, she's she's also Ivan Rasimov's yeah. sister. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yep. And Ivan Cannibal movie Rasimov. So, yeah, she's. I wish they'd used her more. Uh, I liked her a lot. Very cool. And a, kind of a surprisingly um, sympathetic portrayal of witches. You know that that mm -hmm. she was the the witches were the aggrieved parties here. Yeah, the whole backstory kind of fell a little thick. <laughs> it's mm. like, who cares? <laughs> the witch made a curse. All right. Well, let's go ahead and wrap up our thoughts because we have, uh, I think, a smorgasbord. Boatload. Of, uh, smorgasbord? Do we, do we, we not, do. Jeff? All right. Morgasbord. Morgasbord. Uh, Chad, you're, you're up first. Uh, wrap it up. Oh, um, yeah, this is a fun little movie. It's, uh, yeah, I've watched, we have all watched better Bava movies, but this is still a fun little monster movie with witches and, and curses and zombies. And, and, uh, I had, I had a good time watching it. I mean, what more could you ask out of a movie mm -hmm. than to be entertained by it? And, you know, and it was enough good in it to over, power anything that might have been lacking or or not up to what we our usual usually expect out of bava so so yeah i'd, I'd recommend it I, I had a fun time watching it so awesome mm -hmm. jeff you're up next yeah that, i mean this is definitely worth watching it's uh it's got some really cool i guess it's cinematography but and I think that's another thing is there is somebody listed as a cameraman or cinematographer, but uh, according to the information, Baba pretty much took it over and relegated that cinematographer to the second year. Yeah. So not particularly surprising. And there's a lot of Baba S shots in here of weird angles and, and fog and, and that yes. kind of stuff in the castle and outside the mm -hmm. castle. And I love that shot you showed Bill of, uh, the spiral staircase. Uh, yeah. I was actually kind of wondering, was that rope hanging down the middle of that? Was that just sort of their version of a railing for that spiral staircase? Because as they, know. as they walked up the stairs, she was hanging onto it and going like this. Yeah. As she walked yeah. Up. Like that. 
no bell was ringing. Anyway, yeah, it's <laughs> it's worth it. I would have liked to seen a little more graphic uh, blood. I guess uh, a little more. They want a little more blood in your Baron. Yeah. 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 Well, he was he was grody looking, and I could have we could have seen some more of that, but also you know the kills. What does he do? He hangs the one guy, and then he uh, he stabs the doctor with the uh, the little little bent scissors, medical yeah. bent scissors. I don't think they have a name, but I don't know what it is. Uh, so anyway, um, it was fun. It was fun, and Elky. Eh. I'll tell you yeah. what. They should have had some, you know, what was it? Dracula AD 1972 had those taglines about hot pants. I think <laughs> she may have been wearing the shortest skirt I've seen in a movie mm. uh, in quite mm. a while at the beginning of it. She wore it well. She I'm just it, saying. wore it well. Baron Bill Mulligan. Oh, it's Baba. Come on. Even, even if it's not top shelf Baba, it's middle shelf Baba. And most other movies are way on the bottom shelf. You know, if I'm, if I'm listing all my favorite movies of this type, you got the Babas up at the top. And even if Baron Blood's, you know, below most of them, it's still above a lot of others. Uh, it's a fun film. And uh, it wouldn't be the first Baba film I would show, but it's definitely, if you like, if you've watched some of the really good ones, you got to see them all. And this one will not. You won't feel like you wasted your time watching it. Um, so it's it's fun, and it it's the movie you know I has because I really do love Lisa and the Devil, and that would not have been possible without this one. So after after shooting this, where again I don't know that his heart was a hundred percent in it, um, then he got his opportunity to do one that he was able to put everything into, and even though probably artistically it was his biggest disappointment, we now get to see it in its full form. And uh, I do wish, I, you know, I've talked about this with other creators. I wish Baba had lived long enough mm -hmm. to fully see how appreciated and celebrated he is. I think, I think he died knowing that, that he was very well regarded by other people in the business. Um, but it would have been fun to, uh, I really would have liked to have seen how that he, that he knew just how much the fans associated great, films with him and just how much how influential he became so yeah baron blood definitely check it out check it out they've got a good print floating around now too which is nice to see yeah yeah i was actually mm. impressed with the quality of it that i watched um on tubi no less i um yeah i i was actually pleasantly surprised by this i actually had a really good time uh it's you know it, it's it's <laughs> it's not it's not the best thing ever, but at the same time, it, it, it accomplishes what it, you know. It's very straightforward. It has mm -hmm. you know this guy's going to come here, he's going to do this, he's going to bring this thing back, and now they got to defeat it. It's it, it's great, great um, B movie, you know, drive-in movie kind of fodder. It's it's really well done and it looks beautiful and. Uh, and like you said, Elkie Summers makes it even better. Mm. Uh, and I think that the only thing is that, you know, uh, giving, you know, time, a little more graphic stuff would have boosted it up a little bit. And of course, you know, seeing more of the monster. But I think, I don't know. I, at the same time, I think they showed it well enough, you know, because they showed a lot yeah. of it, but it was always in shadow. And that's, mm -hmm. that's usually a good thing, right? Uh, I, I, wonder, I, I wonder if, oh, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I wonder if after making Bay of Blood, that maybe they felt they'd gone a little too far, so they pulled back for this one. It may have been. Maybe. Could be. Bay, yeah. Bay of Blood is that's a fun one. Yeah. I, I, I really think there's something in this film that they it could be remade and sure you know, we could resurrect Baron Blood as a as a IP. Um, I I dig it. Mm. I, I had a good time with it. It was yeah. I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. So hey, can I, I just say one it. last thing? If, if viewers want to watch any Baba film, if you want to go get a, a DVD of a Baba film, make sure you get one that has commentary by Tim Lucas. Tim who Lucas. Is Tim Lucas, who wrote who wrote the book uh, Mario Baba, All the Colors of the Night, which is an amazing book if you can find it, and is the expert on, on all things Baba. Just uh, an, a good guy, too. Cool guy. And does amazing... All, all the commentary that he does is great stuff, but the Baba stuff is, is special. Do we do we want to quickly mention this well of hell hoax? Well oh hell. God, yes, yes, the well of hell. The, uh, okay, 
So, uh, does anyone else want to talk about? Well, that? it's just it's just a, a, like in the in the late nineties, American tabloids yeah. had this hoax about there was some kind of borehole in Russia that yeah. was went so deep that it broke through into hell. It could happen. And they recorded it. So, I mean, this isn't just some stupid story that you might have heard on the weekly world news. They had evidence. They actually recorded, they recorded the whales the sounds of the dam. Screaming. So yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then people went through the trouble of, of examining it and saw that it was looped. And specifically, it was the, the scene where Baron Blood is showing them how he's tricked up the castle with the, the fake bodies or whatever hanging oh, around yeah. and he, he mm -hmm. was going to pipe through the mute. So all that wailing stuff, they distorted it a little bit. And, and that was, that was the source. Ah, yeah. The well to hell. Bum. The well uh, to hell. All right. Uh, well, there you go. Baron blood. Check it out. We have some feedback. Jeff, would you like to uh, dive in and let us, uh, uh sure. But let's trade off. Cause there's a bunch of them, but I, oh. I, I got to take the first one. And this is, I'm trying to figure out, I think this person has commented before, but I don't know for sure who they are. This is on episode 114. Whoa. The, Way back. the uncanny. And uh, Dr. Z63. <laughs> uh, just listen to episode The Uncanny, or should I say The Uncatty? No. Nah. Uh, the, the one with all the cats and the beer cushion, right? Yeah. The anthology. Uh, what with all that cat chat for a moment, I thought I was listening to NPR. Another perfect segment, guys. Oh. Keep the fur flying and don't cough up too many hairballs. Awesome. But wait, it gets worse. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And then, and then somebody else want to take a episode. Sure. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes and Dr. Z63, who really needs to suffer. Gentlemen, I'm still catch upping to your ah! 70s podcast. <laughs> How appropriate that episode 126 was Attack of the Killer Tomatoes on election night. Stop hanging the Chad. <laughs> is this 2000 guys Man. embrace your inner tomatoes you guys need to use your heinz sight oh my god this guy in seeing the true glory that is aotkt too long a title to keep typing the full name i agree with that i can't come up with 57 more dad jokes oh but you're gonna try yeah and i do and i do think that this film was the progenitor progenitor of some of the later cliche movies of the early 2000s. And I agree with Bill. Oh, we can stop right there. And I agree with Bill that there is some Kentucky Fried movie in it. I think that, I think that is, if they do a remake, I think the solution to the killer lycopene should be, wait, lycopene, why not lycanpene? Wear tomatoes. Now that is a film I want to see. To Jeff, gird up and watch it in one fell swoop, not 30-minute segments. What do you think this is? An amicus portmandu? Port Bill, I'll tomato. take portman Port tomato. Oh, Port God. Man tomato. You're killing me. <laughs> Bill, I'll take a mulligan on your negativity to this ah, film. Oh, first bump. time I've heard that this week. Uh, Doc, it's not as rotten as you are making it. Let's see what he did there. <laughs> to, Sir, <laughs> to Sir Chadwick... <laughs> AKA Princess Dragon Mom. Oh, Stay man. saucy. Keep your puree <laughs> innocent. Puberty blues. Don't be crushed by those other three dudes. You guys rock. Can't wait to finish the rest of the 70s podcast. By the way, if you haven't guessed, I like this film. Wow. Oh, Forey Ackerman is wow. saying, yeah, Knock I know. It off. <laughs> I know. I was like, he for he'd be writing for famous monsters. Right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, man, tomato. I love it. <laughs> Oh, All right, man. Chad, or at know. least those old monster cards we used to have back in the day mm -hmm. with the puns on them. <laughs> you do Dawn of the Dead. I'll do Dracula AD. Okay. This is from Mr. Mike Zatz. Great episode to one of the best of the 1970s. I am not really a fan of zombie horror, but I did catch this in the early 80s on VHS rental. I was impressed enough to see Day of the Dead when it came out in theaters and was equally enthralled. Great 150th episode by you guys. Congrats and all the hard work to produce these podcasts is well worth it. Thank you. Yeah, great to get together with you guys to shoot the crap about a genre that is beloved. It's like hanging out with a bunch of buds and yakking about great and not so great stuff. Rock on, guys. Yeah. 
Thank you, Thanks, Mike. Mike. Thank you very much. Yeah, man. All right. Uh, episode 152, Dracula AD 1972, baby. And this is Jay Bart. Uh, it says, I often revisit the Dracula series. The first three films, including Brides, are the strongest, in my opinion. Uh, Fisher and Sangster yeah. pairing, directing, writing were top notch. I still really like the others. They all have their moments, but I really think for me, it's the nostalgia factor. That makes me overlook all the flaws, <laughs> all the flaws, which there are many, he says. Uh, I saw most of these at my old school neighborhood theater. Uh, think big lobby, balcony, wallpaper, and ushers at the Saturday triple features in the mid 70s or on late night uh, broadcast. Plus, I also loved seeing all the amazing images uh, of infamous monsters. Wonderfully simple times that sent me down the road of monster fandom. Uh, thanks for letting me relive those times. Happy holidays to all the Gru crew. FYI, the wooden wagon wheel kill is the second best in the series of horror Dracula. After horror Dracula. So I agree. I agree. Yeah, very yeah that much. was a good one. I love that. All right. And uh, Jay Bart's back saying, uh, so I was doing research on the early 70s horror and stumbled across this bonkers vampire film grave of the vampire also from 1972 mm -hmm. i never i never saw nor knew about it it's not great <laughs> but interesting <laughs> in that it shows how far behind the times hammer had fallen ouch what's crazier yeah. is the premise of the movie is that david chase yes sopranos creator penned the script it's currently on tubi um and of course we covered it on episode 129 yeah uh, so and it, I Yep, I, I just want to interject because I actually I went back and listened to that <laughs> because I wanted to hear uh, what he was going to be hearing. You know, it was one of our first. Well, no, we we started doing videos earlier, uh, but anyway, one of the things I said was I might even buy the Blu-ray of this. Oh no, do you have it? Uh huh. Yes, there we go. That. That's it. Golf clap, ladies and gentlemen. And and I didn't know who did the. Uh, the commentary and it is Troy Howarth. That all that stuff came up in the discussion. And yeah. the other thing we need to look up that was was we had some feedback that episode about a guy that was writing a book about uh Bill Rabane, Attack of the mm. King. Oh. Giant or mm. the giant spider invasion. Yeah. yeah. Uh so I was trying to see if that ever actually had come out. I, I hadn't haven't found it yet, but hmm. okay. One nostalgia. More. <laughs> nostalgia. One more, uh, one more comment from uh, uh, Mike Zatz again. And this Mike Zatz. I love uh -oh. that name, Mike Zatz. Uh, this film has four things going for it: Carolyn Monroe and Stephanie Beecham. Pause. And Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. This should have been called Dracula: The G Generation Gap. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. And my thanks, uh, Bill. You read my mind. Dracula sits in the church waiting for. Drac Dash to bring his victims. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah! Oh my God. Not very proactive in this movie. No, no, he's yes. All right, Jeff, back to you for frenzy. Frenzy. Uh, uh, this is from Kathy Chapman. Kathy. On, yeah, we've been getting some comments from her, both on, mm -hmm. I think, on here and on uh, Classic Hero, maybe. Yeah. Come on, Doc. It is a good movie. Remember, you have to watch these movies in the times they were made. And unfortunately, rape was often made the butt of jokes back then. This was an excellent, how are they going to catch a movie? I just hated the girlfriend dying. They could have killed yeah. the Billy Whitelock character, though. She was annoying as heck. Keep up the good work, guys. Much love. And yeah, even to you, Doc. No, <laughs> even to me. Doc, even that's a me. new fan. Even yeah. To me. Oh. Oh. Yeah, no, it, all these are. This uh, uh, we had two comments from this <laughs> Doctor Z sixty three, and then Mike Zatz and Kathy Chapman has, has started commenting. I love it. Yeah, um, keep them coming, folks. Mike, Mike them. Zatz comes back with a comment about Frenzy. Huh? Lovely, lovely. <laughs> How do you express creepy in a YouTube comment? Uh, I don't want to tie you guys up too long. I have a sack of potatoes I have to bring mm. to the basement. <laughs> the puns are just... I hope there's not a girl. Yeah. Right there, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd better shake a leg. Another great... <laughs> I, 
another great podcast to one of, I think, is one of the more realistic films Hitchcock made. Love the wife of the police inspector and her experiments on her husband. <laughs> Bit of trivia, John Finch was originally cast as Kane in Alien. Imagine his chest bursting. Keep up the great work. Need more Daphne on the 70s. By the way, are your fans called Padawans? Padawans. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> agree on Daphne. Well, always... a... <laughs> yes, I do. We agree. We agree. Yeah. And thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody, for yeah. In. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but speaking of Daphne, Jeff, don't you have some news for us? Most? Yes, yes. Actually, uh, Daphne is going to be joining us for the next episode. Ooh. And in fact, she picked the <laughs> film. Uh oh. Uh -oh. uh, I'm going home. What's it going to be? <laughs> Mumsy, Nanny, Sunny, and Girly. Whoa. All, also that sounds known as girly. It, I've never seen this, but it sounds exactly like something Daphne. Would <laughs> Directed <laughs> by <laughs> Freddie Francis. Yeah. So, anyway. Well, what what have we remember, done to deserve this? Uh, this this might have something. No, I've, I actually have always wanted to see this, but. Yeah, me too. It's, also, one, it's I, always been on the list. I, I remember uh, Joseph Perry picked it for Classic Hero one time, and then we went, oh, no, no, this is 1970, Joseph. So, oh, no. And that might tell you something, too. Joseph, it was a movie Joseph would have picked. So mm -mm. It's going it to be interesting. Be, it might be okay, then. So this is going to be the first time any of us have seen it. It's got Michael Certainly. Ripper. Very I always fun. like a film with Michael Ripper. Yeah. It just sounds like a ABC after school special. It does. Uh, it's, but I think it's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picking on Daphne because I know she's listening. Yeah, of course. So anyway, well, listening. it'll be great to have her back, and I don't care what she picks. And I'm right. You know, I really did. This really I is do, something Daphne. I wanted to see for the last couple of years. So I, I thought it was cool. I'm just Daphne's the coolest. She's dress up as. She's probably. Alive. Probably Nanny, Nana, whatever the one of those names were in there. <laughs> Nana, no, not, not Mumsy. Uh, yeah, dress dress up as the Mumsy. Uh, Daphne. Uh, for, for some reason, I'm picturing picturing some sort of British version of Spider Baby, but probably not. Yeah, yeah, it, that much does, much more uh, upscale. Uh, <laughs> an upscale British Spider Baby. Spider you, you can only get more upscale with Spider. Wow, Baby. that's that would be insane. <laughs> I love Spider Baby. I do too, yeah. but it wasn't. You have to admit, it wasn't a very. What? When you're talking about upscale, you're, you know. No, no. There, there's something special about that movie, though. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we had a great time. And I am so yeah. glad. Thank you all for your comments. And yeah. I'm looking forward to ne our next episode with uh, Gurley from Freddie Francis, uh, a director I do like. I like a lot of his. I, oh, yeah. I think well, we've done like uh, maybe eight. Bava movies now, between classic era and seventies. Uh, well, we should do them all. Seven or eight, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Except for Doctor Goldfoot and the westerns, you might as well do all of them at some point. Uh, why wouldn't you do the westerns? I mean, maybe. Oh, not. I, I, okay, I could do the westerns. Or podcast, but we could. Well, you know, and gonna, eventually we got to do. Doctor we're going to invite Bill to classic era and do that movie, and then the, just the to watch. Just yeah, to just to. Up. Up. <laughs> <Just like that. laughs> all right well, have a it. bottle of vodka let's get out of here guys uh jeff baron bill chad thank you for joining me this was of course a lot of fun to do always always, always. Yep. it is it is good to and, see you guys yeah i'm with that let's say again and merry christmas to y'all yes it's happy getting holidays. there it's getting close might be happy new year we, we may not have another one yeah. what are you doing well this kisses is this a kisses Jeff and I blow kisses to each other. That's Chad. I do sign up. Yeah, that's my new sign off from Classic Era. <laughs> I used to give the finger to everybody, but that didn't go. Well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's please, please, let's say good night. Night, everybody. Good night.